Welcome to Reach the World ASAP. My name is Pastor Scott Griswold, and I am so happy to be able to partner with ASAP Ministries. They have a long history of helping refugees and immigrants who come to America get settled into their ministry, reaching out to their own people, and helping other churches reach out to them. So I'm excited today to be able to have Pastor Sam Nala with me, and we are good friends from a long time. Very glad to have you here. I'm glad that I can be here too. It's really fun to have you close by. What, it is. Three hours is. south of here in Indianapolis from yes. Berrien Springs. And you've been there how many years? I've been there doing full time for five years. Okay. Um, I've been going weekend about one or two years prior to that. So about seven years. So you've seen churches growing out of where you have been established? Yes, I have been able to see Farsan and take part in that process of church planting, let's say, that, let's put it that way. So starting from about eight people, slowly growing, uh, from a pastor's office, uh, we, we couldn't, um, we did not have enough space, so we couldn't meet there, you know, so we have to move to a Sabbath school classroom. From a Sabbath school classroom, it was too small, so we have to move to a, a fellowship room. From a fellowship now to a sanctuary, so it's Amen. kind of like... <laughs> Amen, praise <laughs> yes. the Lord. And these people speak what languages? Oh, they speak Burmese, they speak Koran, they speak... Uh, Chin, when you say Chin, there are many languages, Hakka, Fala, Mizo, Matu, you know, and then there are some also Mizo language. We also have uh, Shan, we also have, <laughs> oh, yeah, you name it. Okay, but this is all coming from the country of Myanmar that many know as Burma. That's correct, yes. And they've come through the refugee camps. Yeah, some, yeah, some of them um, come, uh, came through the refugee camp in uh, Myanmar or Burma, Thailand border. Some of them came as, uh, as refugees from India. Some of them came as refugees from, um, from Malaysia. Wow. Yes. So at a time when lots of people are thinking about refugees, we know these people have come out of difficulties, great challenges, sometimes religious persecution, and over 70, 80,000, maybe close to 100,000 now, have come in the last 10, 10 years or so? Yes, uh, for the past 10 years, more than 100,000 refugees okay. have been resettled from Burma, yes. And they are scattered all over the United States. All over the United States and Canada. And Canada, yes. all right. The last time I got to meet up and talk with you was yes. not here in Michigan or Indianapolis, but in Texas. Yes, in Texas, yes, all of places, Texas. All yes. right, this place that um, we're headed to, to uh -huh. work with the Reach the World Next Door Training Center. Definitely. You were there at GYC, mm -hmm. yes. and on Sabbath we headed out mm -hmm. to an apartment complex where there was a Seventh-day Adventist church member that you knew. How did you know him? We were students together mm -hmm. in high school, in our, um, our, our last two years of high school, we were classmates. Actually, we sit together in the same bench. Wow. And then um, in college, we were in the same college, you know, so in, we, were, we, were, we, were, we shared the same dormitory wow. in, my, uh, in the last year of my college year. So. so now meeting up in the United States, and this man is there in Houston. There's yes. no Burmese uh, or any of those other language groups that are meeting, just worshiping together. But I saw on that Sabbath people from several different English-speaking churches uh -huh. Who came together just on that Sabbath yes. because you were there yes. and had called them together. Yes. And what was your hope as you were coming down and meeting up with them? Yes. Uh, prior to going to Texas, uh, to Houston in, in particular, uh, I contacted my friend. I said, you know, I really want to see a church plant launch. And I want to see a church start in your place. But to start it off, I would like to meet with, um, with the Adventist believers. You know, so he did arrange that. He contacted all the different Adventist families and individuals. And the other blessing that I had is that I, I was able to go there with some of my other friends from the Mizzou uh, church plant in Indianapolis to Houston several years back. So some of those that I met back then, one or two families were there also. So they all came together. They were very excited that, you know, mm -hmm. they were able to discuss, pray together, and, you know, share the gospel in their language. Uh, I, heard, I heard English, but I also heard another language. What was the shared language? Yes, Burmese. We use Burmese. Okay. Yes. So Burmese is taught across the country. That's the main language in, in Burma and Myanmar. Yes. And so they can share it in that language. Do you think it's important that they be able to worship in their own dialect as well? There's a big difference. Yeah. Definitely, definitely. Because when you speak in your language, mm -hmm. they will put whatever they were doing and then they will say, oh, you speak Burmese. So you see, when you speak English to them and when you speak Burmese to them, the way they respond is very different. Mm -hmm. you, are, you, are, you are touching their heart. Amen. And you're trying to connect to their hearts, not just to their, you know, the language that they have to mm -hmm. use just to survive. 
Mm -hmm. So as I listened to them, I heard them saying, oh, we go to this church, we go to this church, and there's a good Pathfinder mm -hmm. program. But you are asking them about the possibility of worshiping within their shared heart language. Yes, and the good thing is, before I even opened my mouth, the Lord was already touching their hearts, and they said, you know what, I think it would be better if we can, you know, uh, instead of worshiping in three or four different English churches, why don't we just, uh, all of us, try to work on transferring our church membership to one uh, English church congregation so that we can meet more mm -hmm. easily in our, in our language. So that was a good starting point. And the, and the neat thing is that the Spirit of God was touching in their heart, and they were the one to say it. Amen. So it makes it much more easier when I said, wow, that was good. I watched that. I sat there not <laughs> understanding a lot of it, but watching you yeah, yeah, draw yeah, from yeah. them, letting them yeah. talk and yeah. share different ones, sharing after we had communion and lunch together, and yes. then we began to meet and discuss. By the end of the day, they had decided to meet together how often? They said, you know what, to start, we would like to meet every Friday night for Vesper. Amen. And the good thing is that the decision was a collective decision mm -hmm. made by them, on their own behalf, for themselves, of course. So it was very good. And, and Sabbath worshiping together? Sabbath worship will be once a month. Once a month. Yes. All right. So they'll still keep the connection with the English speaking, which yes. is a blessing for their children definitely, and for them yes. to grow and to, and to keep. By the second, third generation, they're, they're wanting that. Yes. But you tell me just a little more. You feel it's really important for them to be able to worship in their own language, not just have it translated for them at church? No translation. See, the thing is, when you, when you translate uh, sermons, mm -hmm. yes, uh, majority or part of the sermon will be translated properly, but there are many nuances. There are a lot of things that will be lost in translation due to mm -hmm. cultural differences, due to the context, due to the, you know, the, 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 the vocabulary and usage. And, you know, English word is very, uh, I mean, it, it's, it's very complicated. I mean, yeah. one word can have a thousand meaning. I'm just saying yeah, it. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, for I, many of them, you know, English okay. is not, um, it's not something that they really master thoroughly. So they can yeah, make the wrong uh, translation, yes. I remember when the, they were really questioning whether or not they should meet together. I, I asked them one question, which was, so if you don't come together and have a language in, have worship in your own language, mm. will those who are not Christians come to the English speaking churches where you're going now? And their answer was a resonate. They said, no, there's no way they will come. There's no way they will be interested. And you know, the language, it's not just a language. Mm -hmm. The language, when we talk about language, it covers their very existence. So mm -hmm. for many of them, language and their existence and their culture and their values, they are intertwined. You can't separate mm -hmm. one from the other. So for them to be able to worship in their language, in their, it's not just only speaking. It also mm -hmm. means connecting heart to heart. And when you can connect mm -hmm. heart to heart, I mean, I would be willing to be there. I want to be Amen. there. Amen. <laughs> so, yes. so for those who are listening, yes. it's an interesting story. You've been on to Austin and you went to San Antonio a while back, encouraging groups in different cities. Yes. What can the ordinary English-speaking Seventh-day Adventist church member do in order to help groups like this that may be meeting in their Sabbath school, mm -hmm. or maybe one or two members are slipping in and sitting in the back, um, back pews? Yeah, uh, that's a very good question. We have many challenges and also blessings. Challenge. Uh, many times when we don't speak the same language, there is this language barrier. Mm -hmm. And many of these refugees, because they can't speak English fluently, when they would come to church for the first time, somebody would, you know, would say, oh, you know what, I think you should, you, you should go to that church because they speak that language. He, he or she may not be speaking, let's say, Spanish or Korean or maybe Tagalog that the Filipinos, you know, friends speak, you know. So many times that creates, mm -hmm. uh, that pushes them away. So I think, you know, I think uh, it's very important that we let them know that we care about, you know, we, just, we can let them say, you know, you know, it's good that you come to our church. You know, where are you from? You know, what's your name? You know, mm -hmm. uh, I think for, for refugees, for immigrants, food speaks a big language. So if you invite a refugee or immigrant that comes to church for, that comes to your church, if you invite them for lunch, mm -hmm. they would be thoroughly, thoroughly touched. But they might say no the first time or the second time, oh, right? Oh, yes. They might say no because for the sake, because, you know, many times they don't say yes first. Because for them to say yes at the very first invitation it would be like impolite. Yeah. So, so they want to know for sure you're really interested. You really <laughs> care. They don't yes. want to push themselves yes. on you. Uh -huh. Very polite, I've noticed. Yes. And uh -huh. so you have to empower them. You have to empower them, yes. And also at the same time, um, it's, it's important that we don't micromanage. Mm -hmm. You know, many times we assume that they don't know anything. 
But we, I think it's always good to ask them, you know, uh, how, you know, are they friends of yours? Mm -hmm. are, are you here alone? Are they others like you? So, you know, it's many times they can say, oh, yes, they are others like me, but, you know, they are not coming to church because they don't have mm -hmm. rights. Even for myself, someone is dropping me off. So I think by asking, you know, asking in simple English uh, language, I mean, break it down, break it down to very mm -hmm. simple language. And, you know, you can ask them, and that way you can find out whether they are more like them, they are others. And I think that's a good starting point, you know, to ask. Mm -hmm. yeah. So friendship, food, giving them a place to meet, empowering them to help themselves Definitely. instead of micromanaging them. Yes. Let them be set free with a lot of good support. And also, it's also good to, to, to remember that, that in, the, in our division, North American division, we have a... Uh, we have a ministry called Adventist Refugees and Immigrant Ministries. Mm -hmm. Adventist Refugees and Immigrant Ministries have many consultants. I'm one of the consultants. Mm -hmm. So myself, I'm helping with the Burmese language speakers, the Chin, the Zomi, you know, other language speakers. And we have other that, that use other languages. So it's always good to connect with the Adventist Refugees and Immigrant Ministries together with ASCP Ministries. And that way we can help you find the right people that might be able mm -hmm. to help, maybe provide the resources, you know, we are, we are here. We are there and we are here to help. Wonderful. So I hope somebody who's listening today will be contacting you oh, and yes. saying, what can we do to reach out? Definitely. Thank you so much for sharing. I appreciate it, Pastor Sam. Thank you. And look forward to working together in different ways in the future. Amen. If you've been listening carefully, you recognize there is something you can do by just opening your eyes and watching for those God has sent to our doors so that we can, as we reach out to them, they can in turn reach their own people, not only here in America, but around the world back to their countries. Together, let's reach the world ASAP.